Hey everyone, so in this video I'll be going over the next suspension type which will be solid axles. So many times solid axles are used on rear suspensions and so I'm just going to go into a little bit on how they work and some of the benefits and uh, some of the downsides to a solid axle. So the basic idea is that you have your left and right tires connected by a single axle and the car will rest on top of shocks and springs which are connected uh, to both the body itself and then to the axle. So what we've got going on is there's different ways of doing this. One way is using leaf springs which you'll very often see on the backs of uh, pickup trucks and so basically uh, the leaf springs prevent um, any sort of horizontal movement and but it doesn't do a, a very good job of it um, so there are better there are better ways of getting this done um, but it is a very cheap, very basic, and very easy setup to use, uh, which is why it is so widely used uh, with pickup trucks. And it's very durable. It's going to last for a while. So you don't really have to worry about things. Um, there's nothing really complex about it. So it's, it's a decent option. Another option is the trailing control arms. So one of the problems with a solid axle, as you can see here, is there's nothing preventing this axle from moving left to right or forward and backwards. And so one of the ways that this is uh, prevented is using trailing control arms. So these trailing control arms here will mount to the chassis and then they'll also connect to the axle. So with these connections here, this will prevent any side to side motion and any forward uh, or backward motion. So this is looking down on it. It doesn't prevent that vertical motion. So these are joints so that it can move up and down. So that's one uh, good option. Um, another option which is used on, on a lot of big trucks is called pan hard rod. And so what a pan hard rod does is it connects the body of the car uh, or the frame to the axle. And so it's got these two connections here, one to the body and one to the axle. And then it's got this rod called the pan hard rod which is connected in between. And basically this prevents it from moving left or right. But what it does not prevent, these are joints, so it can still move up and down. Um, so some of the benefits of a solid axle include the durability. They're just very strong uh, just because of the simple design of just a single axle going across. You can make it a very rigid, very strong and durable uh, suspension type. So in that sense it's great for construction, trucks, things like that that are going to get dirty, going to get things, um, rocks and things thrown in there that could cause complications with other suspension setups. With these it's no problem. Uh, they're also good for track and drag applications. Now the reason being is that tracks and drag strips, uh, they don't have road imperfections. They're just perfectly smooth. So you don't have to worry about uh, one tire affecting the other when you go around a corner and you hit a bump or something like that. Some of the downsides, uh, clearance is one. So you've got this giant uh, differential hub sitting in the middle um, and that gives you a clearance issue. Now, one of the things that, that on the other side of this is that a lot of these vehicles that use these solid axles um, will be trucks and so they'll have large tires so that clearance really won't be an issue. But it could be, so I've listed it as a negative. Uh, another thing is traction and handling on everyday roads. Everyday roads have potholes, there's bumps, there's all kinds of imperfections, there's dirt, there's rocks. And when one tire goes up, it affects the other tire. So if you have an independent suspension, one tire will go up and the other tire will maintain traction the entire time. So that's a nice thing about independent suspensions versus using a solid axle. Uh, just the idea that what happens to one tire also affects the other tire. Whereas in independent suspensions, it does not. Finally, uh, high unsprung weight. These solid axles are very heavy and they might not weigh as much as putting in a, uh, an independent rear suspension but they, the difference between the independent rear suspension would be that that mass would be, un, that would be sprung weight whereas this solid axle is unsprung mass and it's very heavy so it can cause unpredictable behavior when you hit bumps and it also can uh, it decrease your traction when you're hitting bumps and things like that because you don't have that mass supported by your suspension system and I'm just going to give a short clip now of an actual uh, solid axle suspension so you can look at one so here we've got a solid rear axle just a solid axle type of suspension You've got the drive shaft coming in there, going to your differential, and then both uh, wheels connected to this differential via solid axle. There's the outside back tire. 
Uh, and then you've got this leaf spring here. And here's just a view from behind, so you can see that again. There's the outside tires connected to a center differential. And both mounted on a solid axle, so as one tire goes up, it basically affects both tires.